Philip DeFranco launched his new podcast focus channel, and surprise, surprise, his first guest is Janelle Eliana. What kind of gave you your pop was the Van Life blog on, what was it? Apartment therapy. Yeah. yeah. DeFranco and Janelle claimed that what put her in the spotlight was the apartment theory interview she did before the first video on her channel was even posted. This is proven a lie, as that video barely had 55k views by the time the third episode of this series was made. And now it has barely hit the 80k view mark. Not even two minutes into the podcast and they are already mentioning the criticism against Janelle Eliana and dismissed it as conspiracy theory. Uh, it's such an outlier that there have even been conspiracy theories, which I know I said we we're going to talk about it. We all know that referring to criticism as a conspiracy theory is the perfect way to deflect it because it makes the other party look like tinfoil hats. And yeah. Oh, look at the, you are, is it really frustrating? It's not frustrating. I mean, it was at first just because growing this fast, yeah. you don't really know how to deal no. with the hate. And now the criticism is referred to as hate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you destroy your critics in 2019. Oh, of and course. I know my truth and I know that these conspiracies are just so funny now. Anyone criticizing is just called a hater, and therefore their opinion becomes invalid in the eyes of these people. And I've been thrown into the conspiracy uh, as uh, someone supporting a YouTube plant or you paid me, which uh, is not true. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it probably doesn't help that I'm having you on the podcast. It doesn't, but you were like one of the first people to shout me out. And yeah. I was like, yeah, of course I do a podcast with you. You talked about me in good light. So DeFranco promoted not one or two, but four times before the podcast. But hey, it's just a conspiracy theory. Hmm. See, would you say that you, you're kind of promoting minimal, minimalism? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I know like whenever I am on any social media platform, it's just saturated with flashy things. And I feel like the past, like, I mean, basically the entirety that I've been living in the van, like I've been so happy with less. And it like really gave me gave me the freedom to just kind of clear my mind and realize that like I don't need all this expensive things to be happy. And Janelle claims to promote the minimalist lifestyle. However, not only does she record, but also edits and generates videos in 4K resolution. But so how about how about this based off of the, the videos that you put out? Mm -hmm. Why did you put them out? Just for fun. <laughs> She claims the videos she does are just for fun, and yet her channel was monetized in less than three weeks with just one video. Plus, her videos are filled with ad placements. I had to go out of my way to purchase this mug so that I would have something that fits in here. Left, you'll find my Dometic CFX 28 compressor fridge. A whole bunch of kombucha and some cold brew. The most unique thing about my van build this 64 ounce hydro flask is what is so I always use biodegradable soaps. Dr. Bronner's is bomb.com. I have my air purifier and an emergency, emergency pee bottle. Toothpaste, also Dr. Bronner's, some floss. I have my jet boil isobutane propane mix. This is a blender it's like my newest gadget so i ordered a cutting board on amazon this is the goal zero yeti lithium 1400 i got this mattress on amazon this is the goal zero yeti 400 lithium battery my camping shower this is the 10 liter pocket shower by sea to summit now i sat in traffic as i searched for a social the most weird but obvious ad placements is where she is showing the section under her sink. And you can see the air purifier. But immediately in the next shot, she has removed it and placed a hydro flask cup in its place with a brand name facing the camera. So there's not really room for a gigantic water tank. This 64 ounce hydro flask is what is connected to that faucet and I just drilled a hole through the top of the cap. With all the information we have, her growth still doesn't have a definite point of origin other than YouTube itself. And I would love to use my platform to just help anyone in that sense. So well so okay. I I know that we talked about kind of an order, but when you talk about using your platform to kind of help, mm -hmm. what do you what do you want to do from here, right? Because you 
if I understand correctly, you were you were working you were working part time. You're taking a break to kind of explore this this YouTube thing. Um, what are you hoping to do? I don't have any set plan. <laughs> I feel like now that my audience is a lot bigger, it puts a little bit more pressure on mm. like what I'm going to do. Whereas before it's like, I'll just make fun videos and show people that like living simply is honestly kind of fun. Overall, it is blatantly clear what is happening here. Much like YouTube is going out of its way to promote this new brand of influencer. If they are completely able to make this work and stick, this will be the future. I mean, with that Brooke chick who smacked around her dog, let's be frank, she perpetuates an image that Google approves of. And despite being exposed by her own stupidity, the backlash for her is already gone because the body of work still promotes that happy-go-lucky, I'm with the dog vibe and people are willing to buy into lies. As Oscar Wilde once said, if you're going to tell people the truth, you better make it funny or else they'll want to kill you. You have to be, the only reason YouTube still exists right now is because there is no competitor. Still to this day, there's no one who stepped up to, uh, to compete with YouTube because YouTube is backed by Google money. So because of that, they still number one, even though they have so many flaws, the adpocalypse ruined people's businesses and lives, they still are the number one video sharing service because of Google's money.